Peace, everybody, and welcome to the DOD 45. On this episode, we have Brett Fullerton and the infamous, grand, incredible DJ, Mr. Dibbs. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Stop what you're doing and listen. DOD 45. This is the DOD 45 show, drawing over discussions 45 minutes with a special guest. Welcome. I'm your host and resident artist, Ty of Art by Ty. And with my co host, Adrian Taiwali'i, we're having conversations with people who I admire and am inspired by. On this episode, I'll set a 45 minute timer, put my pen to the paper, and we'll learn about our guest through an interview style discussion. So stay right here with us to experience some laughs and maybe even learn a thing or two. Okay, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. On our show today, we're gonna we're we're visiting again with Mr. Dibbs, but today we're gonna be chatting with Mr. Dibbs and Brett Fullerton in regards to their upcoming seven inch. Before we get into that, I have co- uh, one correction: we're not heading into season five. We're actually heading into season four. <laughs> And also, I said that I had never seen Style Wars. Doesn't matter. But I actually, two nights ago, or after our discussion with Dibs, I I watched it, and I realized within 20 or 30 seconds of the show that I had seen it. But I saw it when I was very, very young, and I wanted to share some of my some pictures of my my graffiti. I didn't do any, I didn't get up a lot, but I drew a lot of pieces. So I figured it'd be a good opportunity to show some of those pieces. <laughs> okay, there you go. Enjoy. Um, hey, before before uh, they come in, we didn't ever get to do our top three music makers or musicians or bands or whatever that are deceased. So I figured I'd share my three right now. Do you want one? Do you remember your three? Yeah. Are you okay with sharing your sure. three? Um, and then we can just get right into the conversation with Mr. Dibbs and Brett Fullerton. Do you want to go first? Sure. Okay, go ahead. Uh, mine were Nina Simone, Billie Holiday, and also um, Mississippi John Hurt. Oh. Well, you we, we, we landed one together because mine was Nina Simone, Bob Marley and Jimi Hendrix, particularly the the blues album. Yeah, well, Mississippi John Hurt is. Have you ever heard him? I don't think so. When you when you listen to him, you can, you can feel the roots of all modern music. I think, like you can feel early Stones, you can feel country, you can feel all sorts of like the roots of where. It all originated. It's very Delta blues, just a guy and his guitar. But I would say that's one of my favorites because it just feels like it's the beginning of of where we are now. I'm trying to hear it. <laughs> oh. I'm trying to hear. One of my favorites is his uh, coffee, the coffee blues. Oh. Good morning, baby. Yes. How you do this morning? Yes. Mm-hmm. By the loving spoon, by the loving spoonful. <laughs> Go ahead, continue through the whole mm. through the whole song. I can't remember. And so yours was Bob Marley, Jimi Hendrix, the blues, and Nina. Nina. Cool. Um. Well, the, I was just going to share one thing about Cincinnati because obviously that's where Mr. Dibbs is from. And I thought maybe it would be of interest to you, but maybe not. I I have to say, I do realize Cincinnati actually exists now. You didn't realize it was a real place before? Do you remember on the um, podcast before uh, I had mentioned, like, I, I feel like it's a imaginary place. <laughs> <laughs> it is an imaginary place. But we did place. stop. <laughs> we had lunch. <laughs> we went to Shake It 
Shake it, shake it records. <laughs> so it ex it exists and it's cute. Well, it uh since he's Cincinnati's the was the first city to establish uh, a municipal fire department and the and had the very first fireman's poll. So they're socialists? Well, I don't know. I was in, that was in 1853. <laughs> I thought that was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. I th I would have thought New York City or something. But I don't know. I don't know. You know, I got in the mail uh, yesterday or a couple days ago. I don't know. A pamphlet for the Nutcracker. Sorry, I've got. Should I turn off that heater? My AD. No. Okay. I'm just kidding. I was never diagnosed. I shouldn't say I have ADD. As I sit and twirl my hair. I'm just joking. I don't. I'm just fidgety. But what were you going to say? <laughs> I got in the mail the other day a thing for the Nutcracker. And I was out doing some shopping today, just general kitty litter kind of stuff. <clears throat> and I went over to Home Goods to just check it out. And a couple things happened there. But um, I was just thinking how I saw nutcrackers. And I was thinking how you know the type who see, goes to see the nutcracker, right? That type sure. of person who always goes every year. And Old people or, or wealthy white people. Well, I took Nale one year and I was, we watched it and I was like, okay, this is kind of making sense. A little girl, I think it's a little girl, she falls in love with this old man or something. And then she goes into like the rat hole. I don't know. But then it was starting to irritate me. And then all of a sudden you go to intermission and then they're in like Hawaii. I don't know what is going on. It's the weirdest it is the weirdest ballet thing. Is there, is there anything that doesn't start to irritate you after a minute? After well, then the all the music is good, <laughs> but everything else, is, it's just really bizarre. But then I started to get mad because of how weird it is. And it's the same people who love that, who think your art is so weird. Oh. So it was starting to make me mad because it's like equally weird. Sure. But that's acceptable. Is my <laughs> artwork not? Sometimes you say because sometimes my artwork is not acceptable to some. Those people those hate things. your devilish art. Yeah. But it was, I don't know, it was annoying me. Speaking of ADHD, when you <laughs> when you said wa or nutcracker, I was thinking of Brazilian nuts. I was just thinking of uh, my parents' house. We always had this silver bowl full of raw, raw, right? Shelled. Shelled nuts. And we Shelled. had. An and we had a nutcracker in shell nuts. Yeah. And we would have to crack the nuts to get. Yeah, we did that. Get... Oh, my dad always had that. Well, I'm sure they still, bowl. it still I happens, have... but does it not happen? Do people not do that as often now? Nuts are expensive. Is that what it is? We but... have, we have a nutcracker like a. Uh, yeah. But we don't ever have. Un... Sometimes I, I'll get some. Unshelled? No. What is it? Just shelled nuts? Well, nuts in a shell. Means, yeah. That they're, they're, uh, they've come out of the. Well, on today, uh, you know what? I'm going to draw a cicada. Cicada? cicada? A cicada. Hmm. Yeah, because Brad sh or Dibs had shared so a lot of uh, pictures with the cicadas. On that 15-year thing? Yeah. Or was it 17-year? <laughs> I don't know. I think it was the 17-year. But he had a lot of pictures of them and a lot of a lot of things. So, Well, he just tagged me in a reel, so hopefully they're ready to go. <laughs> he likes that. Are they ready to go? No, they're not here. Okay. But we can take a quick break if you'd like. Oh, it's only 549 or 749 or 849 or 949. It's 49 after 49. the hour. It's 49 after the hour. Oh, that's the way to do it. Because it's always... Are there any time zones that do that are not just on the hour? You know what I mean? Like are a different time zone plus some minutes? No. That'd be interesting. We all subscribe to the same minutes. All over the world? Yeah, and it has to do with the sun. Right, but so it couldn't, it's not, I I'm, I mean, I obviously know this is. Uh, you have a world clock on your phone, so you could put in like Australia. Where's the world clock on my phone? And so with the same clock. So look, in Hamburg, it's 250. In Edinburgh, it's 150. In Lyon, it's 250. In San Francisco, it's 550. How do you do that? Sydney in there. 
<laughs> I'm like, I, I feel like I'm Sydney pretty. It's 1250. I feel like I'm pretty. Uh, um. Bangkok is 850. What the hell's the word? I'm pretty savvy when it comes to electronics, I always thought. But just last night I learned I learned about the swipe texting. I never mm-hmm. knew it existed. And everyone's like, "What? We've known that known that for like 5 6 years." Mm-hmm. I just discovered it last <laughs> night literally. And I didn't know you have world clock on the phone. Yeah. What would you use that for? I use it all the time. Why? Like if I'm texting my dad who's in Ireland just to see if I'm texting him at like 4 a.m. Oh. Because I'm not sitting there trying to do the math. What is it in Samoa? In Samoa, it's a day. They're a day ahead of us, right? Oh, no, they're a day after. So right now in Samoa, Savai. it is a day, you know, one Apia. day ahead. And it's five hours maybe or something like that. Five hours in yeah, one day? Yeah, 251. 251. It's tomorrow plus 20 hours. Yeah, wow. Is what it says on here. Which so it, it, it lets you know if it's today or tomorrow. Like so, they're Bank, like Australia, where Australia. Bangkok and Sydney are tomorrow. Yeah, and that just had changed like in the last five years. Samoa was never on that. What do they call that line? It wasn't five years. Sorry, was it longer ago than Much, that? Because we haven't been there. Yeah, but it, when time. we were there, we weren't a day. The last time we were there, it wasn't a day ahead. It was only the hours. Yeah, no, but I can Google it. It doesn't matter. I'm but sorry. what's that line called? The the timeline, the day line, the timeline, the international timeline. Well, is it that? That's what the international, international day line, maybe. Yeah, they that just changed. That's that has not always been like that. I don't know how many years, but that that just changed. But it isn't so- American Samoa. Well, I, oh no, it like just barely creeps right around, right? Yeah. And uh, well, since I shared something from Cincy, gosh, I international dateline international dateline i do you have, you never like those shows that show dateline oh, i like that show um what what interesting facts do we have about detroit 2011 in 2011 it changed so yeah. 11 years ago wait you want me to tell you about detroit yeah what's something interesting about detroit cuz that's where that's where our man Brett Fullerton's from well they live right by Canada. Toronto. Right? Uh yes. Do your geography. <laughs> I know where Canada is and I know where Detroit is. And I know a lot about Michigan because we spend a lot of time in Michigan. Remember when we were first dry- when we first did our uh, we did a, a tour. It was on one of our tours when we were crossing over from Detroit to Green Bay. And we went up into the UP. Mm-hmm. I don't know if those were the shows that we were doing, but this was maybe 15 years ago. But when we were first up there in the UP, I was very much interested in buying some property up there. I, I kind of wish we did, but oh well. I'm so glad we didn't. That would have been awful. I guess so. First of all, it's like 15 hours away. Yeah. And second, the mosquito season's really bad. Do you remember when we went to camp one time? Yeah. And we were like locked in our van. Yes. We couldn't even go out to pee. Why why do we always suffer mosquitoes and no one else? Same with like when we're in Samoa. They use DEET. Why does it, oh, because everyone else uses sprays themselves with that and we don't? I do now. Uh, That's why uh we didn't get the tick haven when we went right, to Wisconsin, but, but Soul did. did. He didn't use that. Oh. But mostly I try to use it on our clothes. But, yeah. You know, either you can get diseases or you can get poisoned by D. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like we're the ones that are always complaining about mosquitoes. Like we're the only ones that suffer the mosquito problem and no one else does. But our friend in Hannibal, she makes a great deterrent insect. Yeah. Repellent oh, yeah, out of catnip. That. Yeah. And Everclear. And that was working. It worked great. So uh, you mean I can just drink a whole bunch of Everclear and the mosquitoes it's will leave me? It's the catnip oh. that does it. Oh. <laughs> I don't like to drink Everclear. I probably haven't drank Everclear since high school. That's the big drink that people drink in jungle juice. That's what that's like one of the main ingredients in jungle juice. And that is a very high school. I never went to those parties. High school. Yeah, that was like around a jungle juice party. 
that's what we always did. And then I I, I know that some people always did um, the Jello shooters. That was never our vibe. But we all we would like to do kegs and jungle juice. <laughs> but it, but where we were from, we'd have to drive to Wyoming to get the jungle or the. Actually, we'd drive to Wyoming to get. We have to drive to Wyoming to get the kegs. Still have to do that in Utah, unless you have a license, if you're a bar owner. And cloves and fireworks. Not the fireworks anymore, which is you should be happy. You're happy about because your favorite thing are you being sarcastic. Your favorite thing is fireworks that blast off in the air. <laughs> We're in a desert. We're like in a drought state. I know for the last ten years. And everything's so dry. Come July Fourth, it's the most ridiculous law that they overturned that. Well, in the last time we had that the firework party, that was twenty twenty. Oh, that well, then was it, I know it happens to everybody, but yeah, the the blaster thing fell over, and they were all over every exploding. Every <laughs> single house was using those, and they were falling over everywhere. <laughs> It was like a war zone. Like you, a couldn't, war zone. you couldn't even see like three houses down. It was so smoky. When I was younger, I loved that. But when that was happening, I I I was very, I was I was very anxious. I did not like it. I can't believe it. I have turned into a. I went and hid inside the house. I turned into like an old anxious old man. Didn't it help that we just put I just put all that mulch in our front yard. <laughs> and then I, it was just dry. <laughs> That's why I was kind of happy to be covering it with that compost this week for next 4th of July. Well, do you have any other interesting thoughts about anything before we take a break? Oh, yeah, and- sure. When I was in Home Goods, the other part of that Home Goods, I was like, I saw this little vial similar to my stevia vial. And it said chlorophyll and something else. And I was like, can you sell? You sell chlorophyll. Is chlorophyll that thing they put on a rag to cover to knock someone out? I think it's that's chloroform. Oh, that's right. And then the rest of the time I was walking around home good going, man, I could chloroform all these people in here. They, were like, <laughs> they just, you know, they go and they shop and they just talk and just buy the bowl. Like you don't need to have a 15 minute discussion over the bowl. Just <laughs> buy so the telling. bowl. Some people like to have conversations. Oh, oh, you mean they were no. at the checkout? No, they were just in the aisle. In the way? So I would go down halfway down the aisle, couldn't get through, go around to see what's on the other side of the aisle. <laughs> just like, just just don't take your friends. Just go decide for yourself or your parents or your sister. Is it hard? <laughs> so, yes, I was daydreaming about chloroforming every wow. person in there. Is that bad? I don't, it's not bad. It's kind of cool for you to share it, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> well, I have, do you I, want I, me I to often, be me? No, I do. I, I can hold back. I often have the not thoughts of chloroforming people, but I, I, I never had thought of it before until I thought I, they were selling it right there. And I was like, oh, that would come in handy right now. But then I realized chlorophyll, I think that's the color. That's what makes the color green in in plants oh i don't know why how they bottle that yeah anyway mr dibs is here all right well let's uh let's take a quick break a real quick one and then come back and and get into some conversation an official an official dod 45 episode because our last discussion with with uh mr dibs was uh kind of just a filler he was filling in because we had a last minute uh cancellation so we were just kind of having a chat there wasn't an official drawing or or any f- official questions but this time I've, I've come up with some official things that I want to discuss with with Mr. Dibs and Brett Fullerton so we'll be we'll be right back after these messages we'll be right back D-O-D-45 Hobsauce. Amplify the flavor of your favorite foods with Hobsauce's award-winning flavors. Create your own four-pack at Hobsauces.com. 
Not only do they make dope hot sauce, they collaborate with dope artists for their labels and flavors, including myself, Atmosphere, Aesop Rock, Crayola, Rob Sonic, and so many more. We love hot sauce over here at DoD 45 and damn near put it on everything we eat. We got extra bottles in the car, Adrian has one in her purse, I have an emergency bottle in my backpack, and if you're ever running out, we always have a bottle available of the garlic turmeric, which I did the octopus label for, here at my gallery in Hannibal, Missouri. Hit it, Bobby. Have sauce, have sauce. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Put it on your food. Hot sauce. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the world. My name is Tony, and I have a podcast, too. I know what you're saying. I already know. Okay, but I have a podcast, too. Just like you, just like your grandma, just like your grandma's neighbor, we all have podcasts, except mine is different. I'm different. I was born different. The Speaker Face Podcast is fun. It will teach you probably nothing. You cannot smell it, and you definitely can taste it. Speaker Face Podcast by... Me, AWOL1, and I talk to uh, my friends, I talk to musicians, artists, all kinds of creative people, all kinds of human beings. I do like little songs and little freestyles and skits. And So after you're done listening to DOD45 with my man Ty, which is a very, 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 very interesting podcast that you should religiously watch and listen to after you're done check out speakerface.store for the speakerface podcast and you could also listen to it wherever other podcasts are podcasting you know what i'm saying so check it out speakerface podcast your life will be better i don't promise Here's a little story that must be told. Hey, we are stoked to be starting a relationship with Brim of the World and look forward to building on our partnership with them in the future. Listen, I almost never go without a hat, so hooking up with Brim of the World was a no-brainer. As far as your situation goes, you know your head is looking pretty chunk these days, and it's time to throw some headgear on there. And I'm not talking braces headgear, I'm talking about hats. And Bot World, aka Brim of the World, has a treasure trove of headwear to pick from, so check them out at brimoftheworld.com. And also check out their SCD collection. SCD is Seek, Conquer, Destroy, and it's their action sports brand. Also check out their Aliens Built Earth clothing line. Super dope clothing line. I rock their hoodies and shirts all the damn time. Uh, You'll find some type of clothing or headwear from these cats on me at almost all times. And that was before DOD45 partnered with them. Head over to brimoftheworld.com and start building your wardrobe now. And uh, yo, I just noticed they're offering free shipping in the U.S. So, I mean, really, can you beat that? No, you cannot. Hey, it's me, Ty. Just popping on real quick to let you know that my art is available for purchase at artbyty.com. So if you like what you're seeing or you want to support this podcast, the best way for you to do that is by picking up a print or an original on my website. If you're not quite ready for a purchase, but you still want to help out, go ahead and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you stream from. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll never miss an episode. All right, enough of all that. Now let's get back to the show. Okay, let's let these... Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? What about you, Adrian? Can you hear me? Look excited! Where's your counterpart? (laughs) Hunting and gathering for you two! (laughs) I want to see some fucking... I don't even know what the fuck that was all about. I just... Did you ever see... You remember these? (laughs) <laughs> so it's like Brett. <laughs> it's that oh, guy. Oh, oh yeah, Stretch Armstrong. They don't really work like they used to look at it. Seriously, 
do they they lose their oh, man. they lose their elasticity after a while yeah, right they're like can you hear me yeah yeah okay so then they have this like john merrick boils that it's not like stretch armstrong was before jo- john mellencamp Wait, boils did you untwist it and he yeah like i untwisted that? it wow. this is what it looks like john merrick the elephant man oh yeah <laughs> i don't recall my brothers having one of those oh i had one and i loved it i think they were bigger though do you think uh, i'll go on the government list if i google does chloroform kill you <laughs> in in the intro adrian was talking about how when she's at the grocery store she just wants to chloroform the people around her. I, I don't know you know what i don't actually know i thought like in the movies it knocks them unconscious yeah but i, I they feel like i feel like in the movies it takes like three seconds and in real life you're gonna have to have some strength to hold the person long enough and then you're probably just cutting off their air and the chloroform probably doesn't really do anything well, how, that's I don't. How long do you have to hold no, chloroform into someone's face? I think you just face? have to do it for a couple of seconds. Really it renders a person unconscious. Then she's they googled it. Asphyxiate. <laughs> yeah, under my son's account. So don't worry. Oh, there you uh, go. <laughs> it'll render a person unconscious, and they can asphyxi- asphyxiate or have heart problems. Within how long? So it can cause. It can be deadly, but it's probably. But within how long? A few seconds. Oh, yeah. When they do that on the movies, it just takes a couple seconds. Well, I know, but in real life, how long does it take? I don't know. I'm not good. I'm not good. I can't do that. I mean, you can, but. You're probably already on all the all the lists. I need to just do it on DuckDuckGo. That's the site you use. Well, what's up, fellas? I'm glad you guys are here. Hey, what are you drawing? I got. I have something fun planned for you guys. Actually, it's not all that great. I mean. Can I get I my eagle idea. out too? <laughs> yeah, let's oh, see. Are you going to draw too? You. <laughs> well, I, I love <laughs> the first time you were on. I loved your drawings on the um, or not your drawings. Sorry, your photographs. <laughs> oh yeah, the, those are actual tour <laughs> photographs. By the way, don't get it twisted. I don't. <laughs> I wouldn't present you with fake news. No, I think you should. I think you should draw. You should draw along what I'm drawing for you guys. When you tell me what it is, I'll determine if I can hang. <laughs> okay, you'll, you you should be able to tell what it is. Why did I do right my I version start? of your drawing? Yeah, that'd be that's a good idea. I like you know, that. We were we were super excited today. We were um, we were out shopping. Oh no! <laughs> earlier, <laughs> um, we went to a uh, Treasure Tronic. That's a synth place here mm. in my neighborhood. No, like really, and uh. They were having their uh, the Black Friday sale thing, <laughs> so they had put a whole bunch of stuff out front for free. Mm-hmm. And we were over there for a while, and then um, for free. Well, there you have to like it's synths and toys that you can circuit bend and Euro rack stuff, and you accumulate so much. Okay, that you know you end up with a whole back room with like twenty of these keyboards, and a bunch of them are broke. And you don't want to repair them. So they set them out front. So basically, I had like 200 things out front, cheap or free. And then inside, he had deals on all the cool stuff. But Brett didn't want to spend, I don't know. It could have been expensive because he's in there, you know, salivating over some of these vintage keyboards. So I was like, well, let's go get something to eat. And then there's a Sam Ash where we were near where we were eating, which was probably a guitar center. Either way, whatever dumpster fire. It is now we're like staring at like maybe we should go in Sam Ash. And um, so we're gonna go in Sam Ash and see what they have. And there's a guy in the parking lot with like a Yugo or something. He's like, Hey, you guys are going in to buy gear? I'm like, yeah. He's like, Well, like what? I'm like, Well, we're gonna do this podcast. I want a shiny light and a microphone. He's like, I don't have a shiny light, but I got a microphone, it's Japanese, it's like 10 bucks. So it's got like two settings on it. This mic <laughs> and like it's even bent a little bit. The front, so you just like, yeah. See, right, right into like, yes. It's setting. It's Jeff. It's a Hitachi mic. Hitachi. Like, <laughs> yeah. This is the. It's bent because you grip it like that, and you're like, yeah. Gets better like, this sound. Is perfect. This is perfect for the podcast. He said it would sound orgasmic. 
<laughs> so I might be using this. Okay, cool. <laughs> they didn't come in black? <laughs> no. He said to clean it first, too, but I said, eh, fuck it, it'll be okay. <laughs> it has a smell. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the smell of, yeah, it's just bad breath on the that's mind. That's the smell <laughs> of a <the> hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Brett? Doing good. It's been a minute since we've seen you. <laughs> yeah. Shall we? Shall, shall I get? Shall I get into the show and start drawing something for you now that you have got your white microphone <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, your cozy seat on the stairs? And Brett's got his uh, pilots. His pilot. I wonder if on. I need these. <laughs> Let's look at this album. That looks good. Oh, yeah. Are they done? Yeah. Yeah. Dib said he was going to uh, slash Nale's tires because they were. The- <laughs> oh, we're out of order. No, and yes, Ty, you did an amazing job on those album covers. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it I'm, turned I'm, out, you know, it turned out cool. Well, I'm glad that you got them all. <laughs> I thought I kept the list. We had a list like this long of prints that were missing. And then it slowly got smaller and, then, and smaller. No, and then he he kind of found them all in one stack all of a sudden, like the hidden stack that slid. But I don't know where the fuck they came from. But all of a sudden he started rattling off numbers, and I'm like, oh, all the ones I told you, I won't let you down. Yeah, <laughs> if they had been, this is how it looked. I know <laughs> they. So Adrian, they weren't because they were numbered, but they. I was telling them that we had three different kids bagging them so mm-hmm. they kind of all got and they were all watching tv yeah <laughs> in any order this is kind of how they looked like when you're flipping through them order wise <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, they were all just tossing them into a big pile <laughs> yeah. and so there'd be like there you'd get on a roll and it'd be like 20 21 22 79 <laughs> or seven you know like so i think it took like well, it took hours three longer. hours. It took three hours to do, but <laughs> two and a half. It would have taken thirty minutes of stuffing. But Brett was flipping through. We got the first fifty to a hundred in a line there, and then I'm doing all that, and he's just toiling away at trying to get them in in order. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. Why did it. you need them in order? They're going with the number of the uh, the album. So the print oh. matches. So like if you got record number six, everything corresponds with it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I get it. Yeah. And I, 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 I when we sent him, I wasn't thinking that that was how it was going to go. What so. a nightmare. I Sorry. know. I yeah. had to pay him 10 more bucks. I'm waiting for number two when people are like, well, I want number one because I got number one. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think number 170 because I got number 170. I think we secretly did that to torture ourselves on the next yeah, because that's going to be fun for shipping. <laughs> no, here's how it's going to work. Oh, you wanted us to dig through and find you one? Well, it's going to be, you know, $10 extra. Cost to you more? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Adrian said, that cost just the bagging itself cost us 30 bucks. Because <laughs> we had to pay the kids to do it. <laughs> it only took an hour. They don't, they've reached the age now where I can't just tell them to do stuff. I have to actually pay, oh, pay them to do oh, shit. Oh, damn. <laughs> No, I'm glad. I'm glad that you guys got them all. They're all in a box for, from a sample. It's like literally rolled up. They're ready to go out. Yeah. No, you need now. Now the next step is just people got to put the money to get them. Well, we figure Friday, Saturday, that's going to be the go. Friday or Saturday, whenever Brett feels like putting them up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's me. So it's on be Brett. On it's 100% on Brett. On Brett. <laughs> what platform are they buying on? Mr. Dibs.com. Okay. We figured if we centralized it and made it all go there, then, I mean, you'll be able to get it on Bandcamp and shit like that too, but really they're all going there. Cause yeah. then they can, then it can, you know, a lot of people will look at Bandcamp and be like, it's too much work. I had to push two buttons. So instead we put it on Mr. Dibs.com. You push one button and it'll be done. It's easier. Yeah. If it's centralized, there you go. All right. What are we doing? All right, let's just set the timer to keep me on track. <clears throat> so we're gonna we'll, we're gonna first uh, start with a few uh, Sophie's questions for Brad. Okay. Oh, Brad Garrett or Brad Paisley? Yeah, I don't know who either of those dudes are. 
<laughs> is Brad Garrett a cowboy? <laughs> no, but Brad Paisley is. <laughs> oh. Brad like Garrett. Co- Brad Garrett is the is the big, tall, huge guy on um, from Everybody Loves Raymond. Whoa! Yeah, okay, I know who that is. Why? <laughs> Why is his name Brad Garrett? Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> Damn. Uh, you don't know who Brad Paisley is? I mean, just tell me. Is he a country singer? Yeah, I think he's a country singer. Oh, yeah, he is. He's <laughs> totally country. For for posse, for squad purposes, I'll take Lurch from Everybody Loves Raymond because he looks like in a fight, he'd be just, you know, smack somebody around and that would be, I'll take, take Brad Garrett. Oh, yeah, but one, uh, one of our rules here in Utah hey, is... Remember, we, we live in an actual I know. dumpster. I was going to say one of the things that, that was like the guy, the guys that I was hung out was you never get in a fight with a cowboy, a real cowboy. Well, we don't have any real cowboys in Ohio. So, okay. that, well, you don't see them in Cincinnati. I'm sure there's a. It's probably a few in middle Ohio. They wrestle bull and. <laughs> I wrestle bull with Brett every time we're making a record. I'm wrestling bull every time. <laughs> Not bullshit, but. <laughs> oh. Brad Pitt or Bradley Knoll? What the fuck is Bradley Knoll? <laughs> he was the, the lead singer of Sublime. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what I'll do. <laughs> Let's go with Bradley. What's his name? Knoll? I knew his name was Brad. Let's go with Bradley Knoll or Brad Mr. Scarface. Brad Mr. Scarface? Scarface's name is Brad. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is, actually. Is it? I don't know. Brad Scarface Jordan, American rapper. Yeah, Scarface. Oh. I didn't know his name was Brad. I mean, I only knew him as Scarface. I'll take Scarface oh, for the okay. win. Dang, I wish I would have known that. Um, th- this one's going to be for Brett. So who's a bigger twat, Brett Favre or Brett Bear? <laughs> oh, God. They both are. <laughs> I don't know who to go with on them. I got to say both of them. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I was a Brett Favre was I was such a I was a Packers fan because I loved Brett Favre. But holy cow, that dude shit a brick. Yeah. Um. Really do you bad. know what I'm drawing here? <laughs> Did Brad don't tell me. Okay. I'm going with. I got an idea in my head of what I want it to be. Okay. Um. Didn't he? Didn't Brett Favre like steal money from Mississippi? Yeah. yeah he's been like he, poor people. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. been quite a quite a twat lately. Oh. Yeah. Uh. What about? Brett Hart or Brett Michaels? Oh, Brett Hart. I just opened my last set with it, him saying the uh, best there is, best there was, the best there ever will be. Who, Brett Hart? Yeah. Who said that? You do? No, Brett Hart said it, but I, I started opening up my live sets with that saying. Oh. Oh, Brett Hart. oh yeah. Who, who, do you have a favorite WWF wrestler or WWE wrestler? The Rock, really? Yeah. Wow. Do you have one, Brad? What? Do you have a favorite wrestler? No. Did you like wrestling at all? I mean, way back in the day. Well, yeah. Didn't you have a favorite from back then? Iron Sheik. Oh, you did not. <laughs> no way. Iron Sheik was your favorite. Yeah, it was. <laughs> That's it was Iron name. Sheik, uh, Junkyard Dog. A junkyard Dog. I would go with Ayatollah. Oh, Billy Jim. No, I didn't like that dude. <laughs> like our dog, Iron Sheik, I told a dude, um, those dudes. Yeah. What's what what about Hacksaw Jim Duggan? What about him? Do you we're not a fan of him? I mean, I'm not not a fan of him. You asked me who I like, I answered the question, <laughs> Jim. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I guess I'm not surprised by the rock. People do love the rock, but all right, I'll give you the rock. Okay, listen, how did so who's gonna explain it? How did uh how did the Dibs Dibs Fullerton become a thing? Oh go ahead, Brett. Hell, you want me to explain it? You're full of information. Um I don't know. I started buying I'm artisting right now, Brett, so why don't you go ahead and answer the question? <laughs> yeah, I met Brad and then started buying circuit bent toys off of him. And a couple of years ago I sent a track I made. He hit me back and said he wanted to do something on it. And then, uh, yeah, we went from there. And then one night he called me at like one thirty in the morning. <laughs> I think it was later than that, wasn't it? 
think it was actually around two because I remember my ex was really mad. That I, got, I told her, I woke up, I'm like, I got to take this phone. <laughs> I was like, I, have, I think I was on the phone for like two hours, maybe. But yeah, he was like, hey, Laura said we should uh, do something together. Specifically about uh, fuck the cop, fuck the police. We both agreed on that. And then, uh, you know, uh, we started with the beat that he had done already. We had already made it. We already did the video for that part of it. We just built from that. What was that called? Um, Accelerant. Yeah. Yeah. Then he made the video. I don't know where you got footage of European riots, but. My friends in Europe. (laughs) Is it ever a surprise where where Dibs gets? He's like he's got a treasure. He's like a treasure trove of. You can talk to Brett about that. <laughs> Tons of it. So that so you you was first you were buying the the circuit bent stuff off of him. Hey, listen, listen, yeah. Jim. <laughs> so when I, the difference was when I would sell Brett a circuit bent toy, and he would put a video up, it'd be fucking awesome. Like he'd get the toy and it would sound great and it would be, it would sound like music. A lot of people would get them and they would be like, it doesn't sound like when you used it. I'm like, well, yeah, you know, like if Jimi Hendrix gave you a guitar, (laughs) are you going to sound like Jimi Hendrix? No. Same thing applied. But Brett, I never said one word to about anything. He would put it up and that's fucking like, I don't know how, like what he was doing. I'd be like, you did that with the, the toy. Like even on the burn bleed record, there's things where I'm like, what is that? And people would swear it's like a guitar and it's actually a frog toy. You liked it, though. You were impressed with what he was doing with the circuit band. The first time I saw Brett was in this like a vintage kind of like a burlesque dude magazine. <laughs> what? He was in it was called Plaid for Days. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Brett playing a show at Northside Yacht Club. I went there to support a friend of ours, and I sat there for an hour and a half, bored all of my fucking money, just fucking beat me. It was just, I was miserable just sitting there. And then Brett said something on the mic, like, I'm going to do a little in-between thing here, but don't, don't you talk, Brett. I'm talking. <laughs> no, and I had a bunch of, like, garbage. I'll get to that, sir. <laughs> sir. Sir. He said he was going to, you know, he's going to do like a 10 minute thing in between the two, two acts. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, whatever this motherfucker is going to do. Who gives a shit about this either? I think Brett had, didn't you have hair then? A little bit. Yeah. So I remember there was a guitar and some pet. He was up there essentially with a pile of trash. And it was fucking like, I'm looking like, what the fuck is he doing all that with? Like, it was amazing. Like, it didn't matter what anyone else would have done that night. Brett destroyed it in 10 minutes. And I patiently waited till all the other shit was done. And one of them, like, yo, what the fuck are you using? He was like, a bunch of trash. And he pointed, here's like a laptop with the screen cut in half and like a pedal (laughs) bleeding, a guitar with force. Whatever he had, it was junk, like he was going to say. But it sounded like he had every piece of gear in the world. The point was, he took trash and made made it sound fucking amazing. And then I gave him sound kits. Basically, I wanted to work with Brett. I just didn't know how to tell him at that moment. I was shy. I was shy, and I'd seen him. I was shy, and I'd seen him in that plaid spread. I thought I was talking to like a rock star. So, you know. Well, you did. You re- realized when I brought up Brett Paisley, uh, Brett knew exactly who he was. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then what? And then it was like immediately, like, hey, okay, let's let's uh, work on some. I saw him play that thing, and then it was a while. I had met you before that, though. I was at your house one night. That was when you were still drinking, so you probably didn't remember. <laughs> it didn't matter. Yeah, I don't remember. I was drunk. And so, is everybody everything burns? Everybody bleeds. Was that your guys' first full collaboration album? Yes. Yes. Wow. What year was that? That was just last year, right? Yeah, we started on that, what, 2020, 2021, yeah. Because it was right oh, wow. around the, the same, it was like the same weekend that I was down here last year. So. Well, so clearly you're, what, there's uh, a few more things coming out. Is there, are there any plans for a group name? Or is it just, is it always just going to either be 
Dibs and Fullerton and Fullerton. Hey man, Dibs. there's already a group name. <laughs> oh, what is it? Oh, is that what the? <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's not the group name right there. Okay. I wasn't sure if that was the group name. Yeah. How do you pronounce that? You don't. You don't. Oh, okay. I'll tell Adrian what it is uh, later after the show. Okay. Yeah. It's like Fight Club. <laughs> it's like Fight Club. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting to see Brad's masterpiece. Here. Me too. <laughs> it's coming along. Well, he's still got 35 minutes to, to create it. This is pretty. Hey, this is pretty hard to even think about doing anything like that in thirty-five minutes. <laughs> I'm hanging in here, though. All right, here. This one's for this is for Michigan heads. Who wore a grass grin best, Tom Selleck or Burt Reynolds? Ooh. I have to go with Burt Reynolds. Does that mean a mustache? Yeah. <laughs> well, and they're both they're both from uh they're both from from Detroit area. Well, I mean from Michigan. Yeah. Um. Okay, what about this for you, Brad? Skyline chili or Empress chili? Oh, see, that's kind of a tough one, Ty. Empress chili is the original Cincinnati chili, and that was when it was uh, Empress Burlesque. And they had a chili parlor in the burlesque place way back. So then Skyline and everything else kind of off of that. There's literally, I don't know, there's 30 different chili, chili parlors within like five miles of my house. Skyline. Empress, Gold Star, Pleasant Ridge, Camp Washington, Price Hill. There's there's tons of them. So you can't not and all you can't all of them are. Uh, there's something good about or great about. I mean, if I was going one, to eat, if I was going to narrow it down, I would say Camp Washington chili or Pleasant Ridge chili. Wait, are you talking <laughs> about chili beans? No. So uh-huh. can you want to explain to Adrian what? What uh chili is <laughs> coney dog pretty much. It's uh like spaghetti and chili on the spaghetti. Are you and- but are you being for real? No, this is specific Cincinnati okay. chili. You never know so with you. You can get a three-way, a four-way, or a five-way. They all have spaghetti, and you can get spaghetti, and then you have spaghetti chili with beans, chili with beans and onions, and then then a big mountain of cheese goes on that, and then you know. Hot sauce. Is there a six way? No, but there's oh. a five one three way at Camp Washington Chili, where it's a five way, and underneath is a big sheet of Geta. What's oh. Geta? Google yeah. it. Okay. It'll be easier to explain if you Google it. You know what I mean? Like it give you a better. Yeah, remember oh. we we talked to um we oh, when we and what's going on over here? It's a it's a meatloaf. It's not a meatloaf. It's got oats and meat and onion and spices. I mean, that's basically a meatloaf. <laughs> but I, I was just laughing when you were explaining that, thinking if I ser- if I was like, guys, dinner's ready, and gave them spaghetti with chili on top, they would just look at me and go like, <laughs> mom, you didn't even try. You know, like at, at all the like... um. At all the like vegan places here, they make a version of Cincinnati chili. Like you get the spaghetti and the chili, and they did they nail it pretty good. Like it's it's kind of cinnamony and chocolatey. What do we call this again? We just call it chili, Cincinnati chili. Yeah, yeah, it's Cincinnati chili. Google that. Yeah, yeah. when we were yeah. talking with uh, Yoni Wolf, he's the one that told us about the ge- Geta. Is that how it's pronounced? Geta, yeah, yeah, yeah. Galeta, it's spelt not like that, but well, I think it's uh, you know, I'm kind of <laughs> well, here's a Detroit one Robocop or Beverly Hills Cop. That one's for you, Brett. Ooh, I have to go with Beverly Hills Cop. All right, Eddie Murphy. he's <laughs> yeah. actually in Detroit next week, filming number three. Wait, they're doing a Beverly Hills Cop three? Yep, starts oh, awesome. filming next week in Detroit. Oh, I'm happy to hear that uh, Eddie Murphy's uh, getting back out on, on on doing some filming. Did you guys know that they were planning to do a Twins three? Did you guys ever hear about that? Oh. Um, and it, this is was totally legit. Arnold Schwarzenegger was talking about it. It was going to be actually. I think they are still doing it, but not with who the cast was. Who was in it. Twins one? Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. I got drunk with Danny DeVito. Did you really? Yeah. Where at? Coachella. Oh, well, well, I know. I mean, Brett's Brett's pretty amazing. He's no Danny DeVito. Why do you remember getting drunk <laughs> drunk with Danny DeVito, but not with Brett? <laughs> I think I didn't get drunk with Brett. I think when they came there, I was probably already drunk. In oh, the OK. Kitchen. Drunk in the kitchen. Is that right, Brett? 
Yeah. Wait, tell me. So in Coachella, you were you there to like, to, I don't picture you went to Coachella just to go to Coachella. <laughs> you were at a, you were, as a show that you were performing at playing with LP. Yeah. So it was when I'll sleep when you're dead. Um, yeah. And so, uh, we played in the big giant, they had the tent thing to block the wind and shit. And, um, we're back backstage on the back line. And so they had a turntable set up and I'm kind of standing on the turntable thing and we're just waiting for them to wheel it out. We have like 45 minutes and they brought me a bottle of gray goose and sat it down and me and Quinn open it up and we're passing it back and forth. And then fucking Danny DeVito walked away. Hey, you going to drink all that? And we're like, no. And he's like, you want to share some with me? And we handed Danny DeVito a bottle of Grey Goose and me, Quinn, Danny DeVito, and L, and probably Wilder and Mackie sat there and drank. Maybe Mackie didn't drink it, but we were all standing there just getting tagged with Danny DeVito. That's awesome to me. I love Danny DeVito. And then we didn't fuck up the show. Like we're probably drunk enough to maybe make a mistake, except when we looked on the right hand side of stage and that Hobbit dude was watching us. Oh. Elijah Wood was over there. Oh. <laughs> you had Danny DeVito backstage. Danny DeVito didn't even care that we were playing. He was just happy to get drunk with us. Sure. Elijah Wood was watching the set and he was right there. And I was like, it was a weird adrenaline rush. Like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> was Elijah Wood bobbing the head too? Yeah, he was a really cool dude. Yeah, awesome. So your your memory of DeVito, he was he was a he was a good dude, or was he? Like the, I feel like Danny DeVito's a reason to party in general. Sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> like there were like it wasn't really a discussion. You just knew that that bottle was getting drunk by you with Danny <laughs> DeVito because it's Danny DeVito. How awesome! It was like smoking weed with Snoop, except you didn't yeah. see it coming from Danny DeVito. You know what I mean? It's just he Jedi mind tricked it. Actually, like just handing him the bottle. Well, yeah, and I, I, I can handle my drink. Like if I were to drink with Danny, DeVito, I'm going to go out on a limb here and call horse shit on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I've spent many a late night on the phone with you for like two hours. Yes, you have. And it's always after he's been drinking. Oh, I, <laughs> You're welcome. Well, my point was going to be I could drink with Danny DeVito. I most certainly could not smoke weed with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I don't think most people. Brett might be able to. <laughs> no, I, not like that. No. My face would be in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do a let's do a Cincy versus Detroit. Eight Mile or Eight Men Out? Because I don't think many people have seen Eight Men Out. The the jury movie. No, Eight Men Out was the baseball, the game, the White oh, Sox the, game. The Red Sox. Now, you know what? Let's do, uh, hey, man, let's do Eight Mile versus Harlem Nights. Harlem Nights was filmed there? Yes, it was. But it's not about. Okay, then let's go Eight <laughs> Mile or In Too Deep. I did see In Too Deep. That's Cincinnati. Yeah. Let's go Eight Mile or the beginning of Deep Cover. Well, does everything oh. beat Eight Mile? Yeah, everything with cool day. <laughs> Dibs, do you get sick of people asking about um, Eminem, Eminem's uh, appearance in in at Scribble Jam? No, I mean, I, I tell the I tell the story the way I remember it. Um, yeah, I mean, it was cool. Plus, that dude, look at how you know he went and got huge, and we we're like, well, that was the first time anyone saw him in the middle. That's the first video he's on, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he was a battle vet in in Detroit. You could ask Brett about that. I don't know. But, like, it was cool when he showed up. Nobody had any idea. He just looked like some white dude standing there. It was him and Dos Juan were the two, like, well, I knew Dos was going to go far in the battle, but we didn't know who Eminem was. Right. So it was kind of cool. Like, it boiled down to Rhyme Fest, Juice, Eminem, Dos Juan. Those were the four. Yeah, I just wondered. Excuse me, I'm drawing. Move your hand <laughs> off. Move your hand off that drawing. <laughs> Well, this one's just, I don't know, for what, for fuck's sake. So I think that, I think it's a Cincinnati thing. I, Tanya, or I, Robot. What do either of those have to do with Cincinnati? I think I, Tanya was e either Cincinnati or. Tanya Harding? Yeah. <laughs> oh, was she from there? So I'll tell you, here's Cincinnati. You know who my uncle is? No. No. John Holmes was my uncle. Well, shit. That's John that's Holmes. Funny. Wait, he was a porn star? Who, John Holmes? Oh, yeah. That's right. Is that really your uncle? 
He yeah. has that mustache for sure. Boogie Nights is like based on kind of based on him and the like uh that Hollywood land murders or whatever, that thing that's based on John Holmes too. Oh wow. wait. But then Ty, didn't you have the guy didn't you have the special effects artist on that made his dong in the movie? We, yeah, 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 the uh-huh. guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I didn't realize that that was like based on because yeah, your Holmes. question to him was there. Yeah, John Holmes <laughs> for the job. I do my research, Brett. My, um, yeah, your question why, was great for why it. the murders. What does that have to do with you? Yeah, because that's the job. That's the story. He murdered people too. I don't know what was going on. I wasn't a '70s porn star. I'm sorry. I can't do everything. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the <laughs> allegation? Something like I can't remember. Something like that. I had to do it like the whole thing is like a big drug induced. What the fuck is going on? Like, did Brett kill that dude? Or like they never really determined who did what. Oh, OK. I wasn't even going to put it in because I didn't think anyone would, would know it because there was I was going to do a gross point blank because that's Detroit. Versus point blank. And that's. Cincinnati, but I don't think anyone saw Point Blank. How oh, it doesn't matter. What about this one? This one specifically for for dibs. Hakeem Olajuwon or Bokeem Woodbine? Bokeem Woodbine all day. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bokeem Woodbine. He's a I know you highly do. underrated actor. I love that dude. So this Bokeem Woodbine, I was in a movie with him once. What movie were you in with Bokeem Woodbine? Well, I mean, I was just a, I was just an extra, but <laughs> what movie? Uh, it was called um, Freeway. No, The Runner. Okay, it's got uh, Courtney Cox and this other guy. But speaking of that movie that you said, Freeway. Yeah. Uh, so the the chick that was stabbed, um, she the, that girl that got stabbed, she's in the movie Freeway. Reese, what the heck? Reese Witherspoon. No, it was with a knife. <laughs> Why is it? He does that all the time. Are you kidding me? <laughs> he wow. sets it up in a different way every time. That was a great dad joke. I'll give you that one. I like that one. The guy who's done it to me, he's done it to me about 50 times. And I every time I walk right into it. <laughs> so I've been using it a lot recently. But anyway, yes, I was being serious because I love that movie Freeway because that I don't know if, if people who haven't seen it should definitely go watch it because Kiefer Sutherland's face gets blasted. Yeah, man. Who got it? We got hit with the fucking ugly stick. <laughs> it's so Holy good. shit, Bob. <laughs> I heard you shit in a bag. <laughs> it's so good. I, I remember you told me you really liked Bokeem Woodbine and I wanted to bring him up. What? Hey, can we still get in on $20 dib slaps? If you really want to. <laughs> how, how, how did that come about? I don't remember. Um, I don't remember. That was just a question they came up with for that tour. Slap, Mr. Dibs, $20. <laughs> I was slapped the shit out Mr. Dibs. If I paid you $20 to slap Mr. Dibs, would you? No. If I paid you 20 bucks to slap Mr. Dibs, would you? $20? Slap Mr. Dibs? <laughs> Slap him twice. If I paid you 20 bucks to slap Mr. Dibs, would you? That's all I gotta say. Speaking of violence. <laughs> We're gonna get this girl to slap the shit out of that dumb motherfucker. I gotta do the same. Where are you with me? I wouldn't recommend anybody. Is that uh, like the kissing booth for yeah. like $10? They give them 20 bucks. Nobody, yeah. n- nobody did it. Oh, I wouldn't. It was well, to slap you for 20 bucks, right? Yeah. yeah. A, couple from, of, uh, a couple of girls slapped, uh, did slap you, but they didn't slap very hard. That was different. That was, um, that was like during the show, and I knew them from Cincinnati. Uh, yeah. So like when they slap me, all I said was, "Please don't slap me in the ear and do that cup thing. Just sure. crack me in the face; it'll be fine." Oh, okay. But, and it was. We got a masterpiece going on here, buddy. But I don't know what that shit you're doing over there is, but this is. Oh yeah, no, fucking looks just like. It. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, sh- I gotta start shading this. Me too. 
here's uh, let me give you guys since it's part of the, the show i do the useless facts so here's a useless fact that you guys can use for some information uh, i'll give you two of them um a velvet underground record once sold for because the other day we were talking about how much the most we spent on a record yeah on, uh do you guys want to take a guess at how much this velvet underground record sold for Twelve thousand. it's a good guess what was it you said 11,000 11,990 well that's a worse guess <laughs> price is right style bread bring it on i'll say 6,400 well all three of you are wrong because the answer is 25,000 that was but here's the thing that you didn't know i'm interested to hear <laughs> he's writing it down shut up I had already written that down as my actual guess. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you had it tattooed on your back. <laughs> See, 10 years ago. It was like Waterworld. <laughs> and then one other quick one. Uh, there's a sonic difference between um, black and clear colored, clear or colored vinyl. So I don't know if anyone knew that. Um, what, is, what does that mean? An audio? There's an audio you can, yeah, there's a difference in the sound. Hmm. Yeah, it's called hipsters. <laughs> well i just saw i had saw it and i thought oh i'll share that because the clear and colored ones usually attain more surface noise over time than standard black vinyl so there you go like the how's it going again, Adrian? How's it? <laughs> is that the stuff i can't do it you did it now i can't do it <laughs> oh and i do want to ask this brett you have the uh, me i don't remember what the music video is oh greed right what, yeah, where was got, where was that shot at? And when, like, was that a big production? It looks really awesome, actually. <laughs> shot at the same uh, Silver Lake Sand Dunes, in Michigan. Oh, but we told everybody that we went overseas to shoot it, and then the guy who shot his wife freaked out on us because she's like, "You can't lie to everybody." What well, look, can't. it does look like you are in it, like a. Yeah, the yeah, Middle East. There's no, he did a really good job at putting no tree. There's no trees anywhere around there where we shot it. Yeah. Yeah, it was another, cool. There's another one where we broke into a prison, old prison, and did that too. Well, that so that makes that so. What I'm wondering, I know that um, what's his name, D, uh, the guy that does the DJ Naven Johnson. Naven Johnson, yeah. He. Um, are you, are there plans to do any other music video things, or do you guys even like doing those? We were really stoked on that video, and then we got shadow banned in about twenty seconds. Oh shit! Really? Oh yeah. Because of the, it was because it was like a content. Yeah, oh. it's such a cool video though. <laughs> I thought it's a, I was my favorite video. Period. Yeah, we put a disclaimer on there too that it's just Legos. But... Legos. Got shadow banned immediately, and then the other problem was, it was a legitimate video, so nobody could sit still for three minutes and watch it. If it's over twenty seconds, God, you know, no. risking it, and so, but we figured it's Legos, and no one's really seen Legos like this, and uh, well, you can still watch it now. Yes, you can on YouTube. So I'll share that. Just a reminder to everybody, we're, we're <laughs> I thought I'd get better at doing this during an episode, but we are having a discussion with Mr. Dibbs and Brett Fullerton. You can say whatever you want. We're it, talking about... And it's more than three minutes. So they, these people have an attention span. Yeah, that's true. I feel but, like people's attention spans on the internet nowadays is about 15 seconds. For it's pretty short. Whatever you post. It's pretty short. Can't sit still. And I and I'm guilty of it myself. <laughs> oh, everybody is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not. You once posted a story, and I and I I fucking loved it. But I wanted to hear. I wanted other people to hear it, or at least hear it straight from your mouth. Um, yeah. And it was it was when uh, when Bismarck had passed away. You had told a story how he used to visit your mom, I think, or something, or he used to come around. So the. Uh... I met Bismarcky in a uh, Toronto working on the Lynn album. And then, um, you know, it's Bismarck. So like, you know, you exchange numbers with, with Bismarck. 
holy shit, I have Bismarcky's phone number. So we would talk occasionally and it turned out he talked to like a lot of dudes that I knew, like top speed and cut Kim and stuff like that. Like I didn't realize that Bismarck was that, that into breaks, you know, drum breaks. And then, um, he came to Cincinnati. He did like a lot of D like a lot of DJ shows, like at like adult DJ shows at nightclubs. You know what I mean? Yes. So I would, uh, occasionally talk to him when he would come to town He'd be like, hey, let's go, you know, take him to record stores like that most people wouldn't know in Cincinnati. So that's that. Bismarck, he would come to town, the DJ, and then we would go record shopping. And that was kind of the ebb and flow. And that was once a year, maybe, you know, but he would call beforehand. And then he, he started doing this thing where he wouldn't call. He would just show up at my apartment. So you have this list. Back then, you had list, like big giant stack, big list of records with drum breaks on. And I heard him one time on a mixtape on Cut Chemist Rare Equations mixtape. Cut Chemist Top Speed and Bismarcky are talking, and they're they're talking about breaks. And Bismarcky says, uh, "Billy Joel Stiletto." I got twelve inch of that, and saying there's a twelve inch of Stiletto, and that there's a and there's a drum break on it. But he's saying it's there's a 12 inch. So I write that on the list as an existing thing, a 12 inch version of Stiletto. There is no 12 inch version of Stiletto. I didn't know that because he said there was. I put it on the list. So when I met him in Canada, he's like, oh, let me check the list. It's Bismarck. You're going to let him look at your list. He's going through the list and he'll be like, got it, got it. Never seen this one. He's like, Billy Joe Stiletto 12 inch. You got that? And I'm like, yeah, I got like two copies of it. He's like, oh, man, when I come to Cincinnati, you got to let me get one. And then he forgot about it. Then the more he came, then he's like, hey, didn't you have the stiletto 12 inches? And I'm like, and I immediately had to start with like, well, yeah, I let my friend Brett borrow them. Like, because they, they don't exist. Right. They're not real. And so he would literally show up and like you'd hear the buzzer for the apartments and you'd look out and it'd be Bismarcky up at the door like, hey, hey, stiletto. And I'm like, I fucking Daryl has him or whatever. <laughs> and then uh, he was there and then he knew where my parents lived because we had been there when we were, you know, I took I took Bismarcky to meet my mom because when we were in Toronto, we were out record shopping at an antique mall and we were going through the antique mall for records. And he looked at me, he goes, hey, do you know anybody that knows anything about Beanie Babies? And this is when Beanie Babies were all the rage. And I'm like, yeah, man, my mom collects dolls. She knows all about that shit too. He's like, can you call her? So I call my mom and I'm like, Hey mom, uh, Bismarcky wants to talk to you about beating me. She's like, Bismarcky. And I'm like, you know, you, you got what I, she's like, really? So my mom gets on the phone with Bismarcky and explains the ins and outs of rare beanie babies, et cetera, et cetera. So they talk and I'm just standing like, get the fuck up. You're on the phone with my mom. Like I want to talk to Bismarcky. <laughs> like I'm right here. He's talking to my mom for like 20 minutes. Get off the phone and Bismarck, he goes to like the antique mall dude and he goes, so I want two of every retired Beanie Baby in this entire antique mall. And he goes, well, that would be about, he's like, I don't care. Go get them. And then politely though. Yeah. And then they rounded up the other people that worked there and they're like, we need two of every retired Beanie Baby. And they're like, well, that's going to be, and they're like, he doesn't, that's not the point. Go get them. So they're gone for like 35, 45 minutes. And they come back with a big giant box overflowing with Beanie Baby. And he's pulling them out and he calls my mom back and goes, okay, so they have this. And she's like, yep, 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 yep. And there's an hour of that to end it with being like maybe two that were in the box didn't stay and the rest are here. And uh, I remember because he was wearing a wife beater and shorts the whole time we were there and nothing but like the whole weekend, just this nut huggers, John McEnroe shorts and a wife beater that didn't fit. And he pulled out a stack of fucking money like that. And he was like, hey, how much is it? And, you know, the dude was like, I don't know, $6,000 or something. He, there you go. And he's like, I need them shipped back to the States. You handle all that shit, meaning customs and all that. And they should be there when I get back. And the guy sent some to the post. And so that's how he became friends with my mom. So I took him by to meet my mom because of that. And so then when he couldn't get a hold of me, when I was like on tour with Atmosphere or whatever, he would stop looking for me and call and I wouldn't be there. I would have been like, I'm out of town. And he would call and go visit my mom and dad. 
And one time my mom's like, hey, aren't you back? And I'm like, yeah, I'm back. And she's like, Marcel, your friend Marcel's here. You know, who the fuck is Marcel? You know, you got what I need, guy. <laughs> what? You go over there and there's Bismarck. He's sitting at the, talking to my dad about all kinds of music shit. And my mom, Bismarck, he's in my parents' house more Wait, than once. All, all because of Beanie Babies. Yeah. Yeah. My well, mom didn't really think it was that big of a deal. She thought it was my cool friend from, from New York that liked Beanie Babies. And she would show him the dolls that she collected, like the real, you know, super old antique dolls mm -hmm. from like, well, you name it. She had a whole wall of, she ran a doll club, et cetera, et cetera. And she would show him all these dolls. And he, well, he's a, he was a collector. He collected shoes. He collected records. He collected right. video games. So he was legitimately interested. And so Bismarcky and my mom were uh, doll buddies. Yeah, that's awesome. You said he's the one that said that, re that he had that record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's the one like they were talking on the mixtape and he was like, you know, they're naming stuff back and forth. And he said stiletto 12 inch and either a cut chemist or a top speed goes stiletto 12. He's like, yeah, I got that. So that's not a real record. Huh. Well, it's not a real record that, that they made. It's possible that someone got a couple test pressings pressed up somewhere and presented them to Bismarcky so that he would leave them alone about the <laughs> oh. test pressings of Billy Joel's stiletto. I'm only speculating. Sure. Meanwhile, all they had to do was bust out the Beanie Babies. Beanie Babies, yeah. That was um, a, yeah, too bad. Those didn't go anywhere. The Beanie Babies? I know. We have or did they? I don't know. Well, you know, like when they died, they kind of died. Like I found like a a tub of Beanie Babies at a thrift store one time. It was like 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. and it was like all the different states and shit. And I bought them and took them home. And I called my mom like, I found 500 fucking Beanie Babies. I'm fucking rich. And she's like, yeah, none of those are worth shit. And I'm like, why? They're rare. She's like, well, yeah, they could be rare as whatever, but you're going to put them online. Nobody collects them anymore. I was like, huh? She's like, no one wants them. I'm like, you don't want them? She's like, no, unless you want me to take them back to the thrift store. It's like, oh, like they just, they lost value. Like crypto. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, no, I know. I got, I got money going away from that. Um, <laughs> it's going to come back up eventually. Okay. Well, I'm not taking, I'm not taking all that, any of that. Elon Musk would just shut up. I think everything would be all good. I hope so. Speaking of collections, what do, do you collect anything, Brett? What is there? Any, do, do you have any like weird collections? Guns. <laughs> yeah, collected a lot of hockey cards when I was younger. Like I have tons of them. Tons. Are they? Are there? Are hockey cards like have hold value? Some of them do because I have a couple rare like Gretzky cards that there's only like they'd make like upper deck would make a set of just there's 10 cards in like the subset and I have one Gretzky card that's there's only one of in the whole world like oh all right I, I keep hoping that one day I'm going to find the guy that's been trying to collect the set and I have number 10 of 10 and there's only one of it so each card in the set was different and there's one of each one so there's only 10 cards ever made for that set whoa Hopefully I can find the dude that wants that and just be like, yeah, um, yeah. give me like a million bucks for it. Cause it's graded and it's graded at like a 9.8 or something like that. So it's like perfect. Well, when you say the, when you say the number million, I remember one night when I was <laughs> of, of the nights that we speak of where I was drinking and on the phone with <laughs> Jibs. But I, I, I remember asking you if so, I had a, had a conversation with somebody that had some money. So it came across my mind and I asked you if you, for a million dollars, would you bring back a scribble jam? I think from what I remember from the conversation, it sounded like it, that money, the right money was there. It sounded like you were maybe opting to say, well, maybe was that, am I wrong on that? Was I drunk? I mean, nobody's going to give a million dollars to bring it back for one. You know, that's not going to happen there. He's kind of illuminated. And the other thing is, uh, I don't really want to, on top of all, on top of why the real reasons, I don't want to hear anybody's mouth. <laughs> you don't want to hear anyone's mouth. 
Well, if if like if I was if let's say that happened, that that unfolded and it perfectly happened, I would invite back, and I'm sure Kevin and everybody would agree we're going to invite back all the guys that have won before. And so there's going to be all the years of the champions. And then you can bring whoever you want from today because they are going to have to rap on beat. God forbid. (laughs) Oh, and everybody's recording with their cell phone. Well, that's what I was going to wonder too. Would that, do you think with all the cancel stuff going on, people would be afraid to. Yeah. I don't think the veterans would be afraid. I think the young kids wouldn't know what to do. But aren't they still doing battling in other places or is that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they are. But the language they would have to endure at Scribble Jam is just, it's unmatched. You And you can't, oh. you can't come in there with a written thing. Like, I can't come in there with a written thing about Brett because you don't know who you're battling until it's like, here's the bracket of, you know, we know there's 64 people, but Kevin Beecham is drawing the names, like literally pulling them out. And that's who goes against who. And you have to get through all the regular people before you get to battle against the people that already hold a title. Yeah, so maybe it wouldn't even work even if someone did bring that million. Um, there'd be a lot of crying. <laughs> we were um decorating for Christmas today and we had Home Alone on the background. Yeah. And there were a couple parts in there where I was like, this wouldn't even work today. Even in Home Alone. <laughs> There's a million movies that when I watch them now, I'm like, never. That wouldn't, you know, like, like yeah. that. And it doesn't even seem like that long ago when the movie was out. And you're like, wow, they did that shit. Like, and this movie is really soft. You know, it's on Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What part, Adrian? Let's hear you say it. What part? What? Oh, I don't know. There oh. was just a couple that I was <laughs> like, wow. Oh, what, what's the name? Of, what is the what's the title of the of the, the seven inches coming out? OK, that's all your. That's all you. <laughs> Shit, man. Um, <laughs> he comes up with the titles. Well, you know, I can't pronounce the titles. <laughs> if you look at it really hard, though, you'll be able. You know, um, the whole thing is just trying to fuck with your head, and that should be evident by Ty's cover. <laughs> because I sent him some videos and had some conversations. And I'm like, now draw and see what happens. Non compost menace. Right? Yeah, non compost menace. Yeah. Oh, is that is that um is that Latin? Uh, it's something we don't need to tell you. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I will say when when I when I designed the album cover, uh, Dibs did send me a bunch of videos and links to some stuff to watch, and <laughs> it was a dizzying <laughs> night. <laughs> it just means not sound of mind. There you go. See? Oh, and it is Latin. It's gonna be three. It's gonna be three seven inch, right? Three seven inches. Each seven inch comes with a glorious print hand styled by Mr. Ty. And, and the cover, nice. too. Well, all three of them you have to put together to make one whole story. So hold on. You put three of them together to make one big thing? That's right. <laughs> it's like we're shooting a commercial. <laughs> well, so th- this this album, this one right now that we're... we're we're um, d- deciphering the title. That one's done. And it's it's coming out on Friday. Friday. But, but there's only a limited number that they can get. There's only 300. And so when Sunday rolls around and they're all gone, I don't want to hear a fucking word out of anyone's mouth. Not my fault. Right. You should have jumped. Has you guys record? Has the second album been recorded? Or is that something you're currently working on? And same question for the third. It's the second one is uh, finished. Okay. Ish. It's pretty cool. We're working on the third one, guest starring Linda Blair. Oh, wow. (laughs) Which part? Her speaking role or just the puking? Guest starring nothing from the exorcist. Our guest guest vocalist on the third seven inches, Linda Blair. Oh, yeah. I do recall you said something to me about that. You guys are in the neck of the woods that you might have an answer to this question because I've had, I've, I've posed this question to several people. What's the deal with the um the the gigantic firework stores? Why do they got to be so why are they so massive? Does anyone know? I have no clue. I guess bigger is better. Yeah. Yeah. Why? But why is it so fucking huge? Because if you're going to fucking blow up in an accident at the place you work, you might as well get it all done at once. <laughs> I wondered if it has something to do with 
if it were to the bigger those places are, the more you want to spend. I feel like it's a big advertisement. So you're like, wow, you're not going to a little tent. Uh, you're going to a warehouse yeah. of doom and boom. And if you go in there, there's not shelves and shelves. It's just, no, just in the middle of the floor. We have a bunch of fold out tables. So it's really a wasted space. I think the building itself is the advertising. Oh, okay. Well, maybe that makes sense. You just say they used to just have rows and rows every year. The shit gets bigger. And so now there's no, you don't, the, the shelves are, no one buys fireworks. You buy mortar shells now. And that's what you shoot off. And no one cares. There's, the holiday has nothing to do with it. The fact that it's legal now. Well, it's legal for like four or five holidays now. That's how it is in Michigan. You can only do it the day before holiday, the day of the holiday, and the day after. And then they want you to cut it out until the next holiday. It doesn't really make any difference here because it sounds like that every fucking Yeah, night. it's such a different. Well, I think I talked to you uh, on the 4th of July, and you, I think it was the first time the city it was legal, and you said it was a fucking full-on war zone. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, it, it's pretty bad even when it, no one cared when it was illegal, but when they just let it go, I sat outside. I wasn't watching the fireworks. I was making sure nothing landed on the top of my fucking house. Because mm-hmm. people that had never touched a, a mortar show or anything are just lighting shit off everywhere. Yeah, you know what? Rookies don't know. You got to weigh. You got to put some sort of. It's got to be on a nice flat ground, and it's also best to have some sort of weight set on because those fucking things fall over. You should <laughs> like build out of cinder blocks. A That's how we square. Have and then put it in the middle of the square so it can't fall over. But I used to take plywood and then put a two by four, drill them into the plywood, and then oh. drill the actual tubes on there. You went pro. Well, uh, I I have I have a couple of videos somewhere of like motors blowing up like almost five feet in front of me <laughs> one Fourth of July. They're on a dock. I was shooting them off the dock, and like, yeah, this one had just. It wasn't a dud, but it didn't shoot the way it was supposed to. It was about, I had it on the GoPro. I had the GoPro. I saw it go up, and then I heard it, and I just started running and turned around. And I had the GoPro, like, right level with it. Oh, God. <laughs> I want to show it. It's pretty, uh, yeah, it's gnarly because it didn't hit me, and it was really, really close. Well, let me do um, the, the trivia questions for you guys so we can get all what's of the, the What's the things. trivia question about? Well, it's gonna. It's I've changed them now. They're pop. They're pop culture questions, and I'll let you pick the the um the decade. So we'll start. We'll start with Brett. You can choose from the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, or the 2000s. To uh, 80s. Okay. Name two of the four ghosts that feature in the arcade game Pac Man. Oh man. I remember this one, the Daisy one, mm, blue and orange. Well, I can tell you, one of them's got the same name as a famous um, uh, outlaw mm. who was married to a famous outlaw. Who was married to? Oh, oh Clyde! Isn't Clyde? Yeah, Clyde. Warren? Yeah. Oh, the ghosts had names. And then the other three are nothing, have no sound similar to Clyde at all. <laughs> right. um, but they all rhyme. They all sound the same. Uh, I, what am I drawing with right now? <laughs> uh, Blinky, Inky, and Pinky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Clyde. I thought it was just name some of the Pac-Man characters. So I was like, Pac-Man? <laughs> All right, for for you, Brat or Dibs, what what uh what, what era do you want? What decade? Let's do the let's do the eighties. Okay, the eighties. What what did you do? Yours yours was eighties, right, Brett? Yeah. yeah, mine was eighties. Okay, what was the name of the short flounced layered skirt that was a popular fashion trend for teenage <laughs> girls during the early eighties? Say that again. The beginning. What short- is flounced? What was the name of the short flounced layered skirt flounced. that was a popular fashion trend? Okay. Uh, flounced means trimmed with a wide ornamental strip of gathered material. Yeah, I was thrown with that word. Um, flounced. Did Madonna wear it? Probably. Probably. Well, let's see. This was oh, it was for like, a popular fashion trend for teenage girls. I don't know. A trash, trash bag. Was it like the tutu? <laughs> Wasn't she? It's almost like like tutu, but it's not tutu skirt. It's poodle skirt. (laughs) 
polka dot skirt. Poodle skirt's great name. Um, yeah, those were from the 50s. Uh, no, it's a raw, raw skirt. Whoa. But I don't wear, how would I know what a woman's skirt is called? <laughs> and in my defense, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. <laughs> At some point, you had to help take them off. Um, <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> well, then I'll give you one other one. I was busy perfecting my drawing. <laughs> That's what I was doing. I, I, I can't pay attention to a lot of stuff, but I go. did movies. Who traded places with Eddie Murphy in the 83 film Trading Places? I do know that answer. Dan Aykroyd. That's right. Well, you guys can share that correct answer. What What's the best cereal? Oh, I know. Mm. Here, can I guess each of yours? Sure. Do Brett's first. Brett, you look like a... What are those circles with the oats and the um honey nuts. bunches of oats honey bunches of oats kind of person no <laughs> and did you look like a count chocula <laughs> i don't see I, that i do I, I no i do like count chocula i like all the little count chocula fruity pebbles all those are great because you can drink the milk <laughs> but if if I had to pick a favorite cereal, I mean, there are a lot of cereals that I like. Somebody, I'll get back to that in a minute. Somebody opened a cereal bar here mm. last week. Oh, that's I've a seen those. brilliant idea. I, I think so, too. Like the whole, I saw the saw it on the news and the whole, all the shelves are just cereal. But um, I'll tell you what I really like. I'm sure this has something to do with my dad because he had a way of tricking you into thinking that shit was good. Um, I really like grape nuts. Oh, oh, that's those gross. really, really chunky, hard brown. Yeah. Yeah, I used to love those. <laughs> great nuts, grape nuts, and li- and I liked life too. Oh, that was my that's my number one. I didn't have any sugar, like sugar cereal till I was like 18 or 19 years old. That's how I got fat when I moved out <laughs> and I found out all this other shit existed. I didn't drink a pop. I didn't drink more than a Dixie cup of pop until I was an adult and lived on my own. <laughs> The first time I went to a fucking McDonald's and I had money, I couldn't fucking. I spent sixty dollars at a Taco Bell when Taco Bell was like fifty cents a burrito. Oh man, you just said a bunch of things right that I <laughs> lost eighty pounds eating Life cereal only. I love Life cereal. Oh, and how did that work? Because I can do that right now. I'm one of them. Let's do it again. Swear to God, I, I ate Life cereal for breakfast and for lunch, and then with, I would like have almond, a banana something for almond different. Almond milk. Not nope, nope. Then. This was when I drank milk back. But this was way. I don't. Well, I don't, I don't drink milk. Milk's disgusting. Oh, but it could be. Yeah, it could. I don't. We yeah, use it could be We do use oat. Things milk. that I would drink. I'll tell you what. I would. I would drink gin out of a gutter before I would put milk on my mouth. It's <laughs> fucking horrible. Yes, I'm gonna let this cow piss down my throat. Not happening. It does have a, a pussy flavor. If I was a baby cow, I would probably enjoy cow milk. I am not, however. A baby it does cow. have a pussy flavor. <laughs> it does. Milk is pretty gross. It is so gross. I do. I don't use it anymore. I, I haven't eaten cereal in a long time, but like that's the only thing I ever used. I like for. almond milk. Yeah. What was your? What's your? What's your best? Your top cereal? I'd go with either Captain Crunch or Rice Krispie Treat cereal. Rice Krispie treats, not Rice Krispies. Rice Krispie, rice Krispie treat? treat cereal. Oh my wow. god! It's like <laughs> little chunks of Rice Krispie treat. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> sure it is. I had well, you backwards. You had said that sixty. Oh, sorry, Adrian. You were, did you? Finish? I was just gonna say. I think I've seen like a Oreo cereal too. Oh yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> How about um, Captain Crunch just rips the roof of your mouth to shit. It does, but it's so good. <laughs> you gotta like. Whatever you're putting in, you gotta let it like, kind of soak into it before you. <laughs> Everyone knows that. No one does it. You put it there, and you're like, "I'll let it soak for like," and then you bleed in your mouth. I always liked that. Yeah. I don't know. I but my my favorite's the peanut butter cap and crunch. That's my top cereal. That's Is a it really mm-hmm. the peanut butter? Mm-hmm. Yuck! That's a good one. Yeah, I'm glad you said the grape nuts because I forgot about that one. That what my family, yeah, we always only my mom was not giving us any sugar cereals. So like I got Malto Mill and fun. Malto Mill. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty down there on the that's at the bottom of like <laughs> Look at the- Malto Mill. 
Wait, wait. But then you said $61 for Taco Bell. I swear to yeah, God, man. we went to Taco Bell like two months ago and the it was like $74. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm talking about Taco Bell when a burrito was, you know, like right. 50 cents and like 10 tacos was like three bucks. I ran up a $60 bill. I sat in my Nissan Sentra and well, it was fatter day. Fatter day. And it was great. And I had all the sauces. <laughs> All the sauces. All the sauces, Brett. <laughs> and all the sauces that were possible. If the cow, if each udder was a different Taco Bell hot sauce instead of milk. <laughs> That's fucking gross. Geez. You know what? If, if cows had a Taco Bell udders, yes, Adrian, <laughs> I would be, I would have a cow out back. And, you want mild? Or you said hot? How about fire? Fires the one closest to the chin, right up here. Diablo. Diablo. Yeah, I, I feel like I need to make that should be a drawing tie. <laughs> well, I'm trying to draw others. I don't remember <laughs> what they look like. A Taco Bell sauce cow. Uh, <laughs> you said that out loud, and now Amazon heard it, and it's coming <laughs> next week. <laughs> He's going to lay off more people and hire Taco Bell cows. Because I like to throw graphics in, let me throw a couple of uh, uh, let me just throw a, ha- a short little bit of um, uh, Sophie's choices at you. We'll just go. We'll go. Brett Dibs, Brett Dibs, Brett Dibs, Dairy Queen or Burger King. Dairy Queen. OK. Hey, we have a Dairy Queen here, man. You didn't say shit about that when you were fattening <laughs> up at Burger King yesterday. You didn't say anything about it. Either. You're right. <laughs> Still not my fault. Uh, Dibs, Cool Keith or Keith Richards? Cool Keith. <laughs> that one's too easy. Uh, Brett, Waylon or Willie? Watch yourself. Watch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, Waylon, I guess. Yeah. No, Willie. No, You're go going Willie. Willie, you pothead. I'm going Willie. I'm going Willie all day. Yeah. Waylon Jennings or Willie Nelson. Yes. Um, yeah. Dibs, Mr. Ed. Or Mr. Potato Head? <laughs> Original Mr. Potato Head. An actual you, potato. It was an actual yeah, potato. Yeah, potato. You got the you had the potato and then it was just a box of shit you stuck in a potato. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a cheap toy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your kid, here's your potato. That's basically <laughs> what we do at your brother's every Thanksgiving. Oh, I know. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, you could you could play with an original Mr. Potato Head and pull all that shit out, and then you could plant that and grow more Mr. Potato Heads. So oh, there you go. <laughs> you can make a family. Because you can eat just but you can live off potatoes. <laughs> potatoes and water. Fact. Look it up. Adrian. <laughs> I believe you. Yeah, but I thought like if you eat a raw potato, it's really bad for you. Oh, it's fucking not good for you. And it's disgusting. They're they're good. No, I used to eat fine. them all the time when I was a kid, and my grandma was telling me that I would get worms. Yeah, but they tell you you'll get worms from every... Don't put the pen in your mouth. You'll get worms. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, what was your first What was your first job, or what was your first car? My first car? Yeah. It was like a Pontiac Sunfire, maybe? Like the old box one? <laughs> like the old boxy one? Yeah, I was like 15 or 16 and my mom's friend just gave it to me. Oh, wow. shit. Like three weeks later, the brakes went out on it. And it just, <laughs> I was like, yeah, it sat there for a little bit and then it got towed away, I think. What was, you, what was your first car, Dibs? I think we I've asked you that. Was it a truck? No, I had a, a Nissan Sentra, that, like an older Nissan Sentra. <laughs> the one that you spent 61 bucks at Taco Bell? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I kind of had a... My friend's stepfather, when I lived with them, he gave me, he kind of gave it to me because he, he gave me a Yugo. He didn't want it because it just, it's not really, it's barely a functional car. And I probably drove it three times and then the whole steering column went out. And I, I managed to like glide into the parking lot of the Red Lobster I was working at at the time. It's a dish guy. And I just left it in the parking lot and never went back for it. (laughs) Then no one ever said anything because it only took up like this much room and it sat there for like two years. This is the usual. Well, what's going on up in mid in in the Midwest? Everyone's just giving giving kids their cars. Well, they they're like right next to Detroit. That's where all the cars were. So I don't think they made Yugos in Detroit, did they? No, I think they made Yugos in Yugoslavia. (laughs) 
Oh, no, that's why it's called a Yugo. Oh, are you bullshit? No, that's why it's called a Yugo. This this line says, a quick look at the Yugo, the worst car in history. <laughs> <laughs> well, then what was your first, Brett, what was your first job? My first job? I worked for my dad and my grandpa. Like, that was my first job. What did you do? They owned a machine shop, and I would go there and clean up. And then once I got a little bit older, they started teaching me how to run the machines. And then and they started beating you with them. Oh, my grandpa. I remember because my dad would drive his truck into the shop. And I'd get there, and I'd want to sleep in the car and his truck. So I'd just sleep. And then my grandpa, like, he'd come over and first he'd pound on the window. And then he'd get my dad's keys, and he'd grab me by the collar and just drag me right out of the truck and make me start working. <laughs> He's like, I'm not paying you to sleep in, my, in your dad's room. That explains what you do when you're at my house trying to make me work on beats and I'm taking a fucking nap and you grab me up by the neck. <laughs> and what the fuck are you doing? He did it this morning. I got fucking rug burn and all kinds of shit. <laughs> and dragging me down the steps. I was trying to relax and have the neck thing and the traps getting better. And he just comes in here like a, a fucking bear on acid. Get the fuck downstairs now. <laughs> 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 what was your first job, Dibs? It was either Natorps, which is a garden store, or Taco Bell in, in the mall. <laughs> you and Taco Bell. <laughs> I can't remember if it was the well, the Natorps is like a summer job thing. I'll, I'll say Taco Bell because I met Cut Creator and Bobcat and LL Cool J there. Wait, oh. were they working there or they were just in? Like... No, they were on tour. No. Oh. <laughs> they were on tour and. The food court was weird. There was one over here, but Taco Bell was here. The Chinese spot was there. And like some donut spot was across the way. And they stood there. And I looked, I was like, that's fucking cut creator. And then I took their order and didn't say anything remotely. Cool I just was in awe. They had the big ass giant fucking dookie rope chains and shit. And I just stared at him like, wow. Yeah. Cut creator. If Donkey Kong is a monkey, not a donkey, wh wh why the fuck do they call him Donkey Kong? I think he's a gorilla. Well, either way, he's not a donkey. I think his name's Donkey. I don't know. Don Quixote, yeah, maybe. Something to do with Mario and jumping over stuff. And why <laughs> I don't know why that equals Donkey Kong. I don't know. Because Mario was in the old Donkey Kong game, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, he was. Yeah. But I'm just still can't. I'm, I'm I've it still haven't been able to make sense of why well, they call he him. couldn't be a King Kong. Maybe it was just a maybe it was just a copyright thing. You can't call him King Kong. Well, we'll just call him Donkey Kong. Why not Snake Kong? Because Donkey sounds better. It does only because we're used to it. All right. Fuck that one. If both you guys if you guys were to help each other cheat on a test, who who would be uh, who would be helping who? What kind of test? Uh. Something scholastic. Yeah, that doesn't narrow shit down. What kind of test? <laughs> math. Math. Love math. I'd be I'd be asking him for help. I love math. What geography. About, yeah, geography. I'd ask Brett. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Looks like you both would be. <laughs> we both flunking that one. <laughs> Sex education. <laughs> I remember that class. I was dumb as shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just, you know, diagrams of, you know, the inside of a body. I think that was the point. You don't want to have anything on you inside of anything that looks like that. You're right. And then the final threes, what band would you be embarrassed to admit you listen to? I don't know. Sometimes I get in these zones where I just listen to some of these new rappers where I'm just like, because the beat will be catchy, but then the rapping sucks. But I'd kind of just blurt out the rapping and listen to the beats. I'll put on Spotify and just look up some shit trap music and then <laughs> just listen to it. <laughs> what what about you, Dibs? You got anyone that you'd be embarrassed to admit you listen to? I mean, I'm probably embarrassed by all of them. It doesn't mean I won't admit them. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'll play. I was a I was I playing Megan Trainer all about that bass and doing all the dance from the video in the car with him in the back. Just he wouldn't even look at me. He was doing it last night. I know, uh, I know, like, like you know, like all the songs from Little Mermaid, all the songs from Greece, all the songs from West Side Story. Why? Because I like them. Really? Well, that's yeah. cool. You like musicals? No, I just like those three I named. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>
Wow. Uh, ELO. I have a secret ELO and uh, ABBA. There's nothing wrong with ELO, though. ELO is one of my favorite groups. There's nothing wrong with ABBA either. Damn it. Did you like the music? Did you like the... My not my daughter loved the show. What's it called, Adrian? Mamma Mia. Mom, Mamma Mia. I never saw it. It's pretty good. It is There's good. nothing for me to sample in there. Oh, well, why not? Didn't they do a play of that? Like a big Broadway Probably. play? Probably. It started as that, I think. I sometimes find that I'm a little embarrassed to admit that I, I actually really, really like The Cure quite a bit. Why? You I love them. I don't know. I Sometimes I'm like, oh, God. I think The Cure is respectable, even, even when it was new. I don't, yeah. I don't remember, you know, like people being like, you like the cure? You're a fucking asshole. Like, I get, yeah, I'm not embarrassed by it, but I do find sometimes I'm like, I don't, I'm shy to say that I, I'm a big, big cure fan. But you, you could do me a favor by not playing it around me, but <laughs> she fucking hates it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine that you like it. <laughs> she cuts off so much of my music. All right, here's your guys' philosophical question. Are, are you ready for this? Lay it on us. All right. Who decides what is and is not music? I got to say, I get, yeah, I I guess you can't, I can't pinpoint like who would get to call it because anything's music really to me. So I don't know. I think it's different for people who don't make music. Like, I don't know, because they could look at something and be like, that's not music. And I'm like, yeah, it isn't. I could be recording something, just even just a bird chirping or wind. Or a lot of the rock and rollers fucking were saying that about like hip hop music that it wasn't music. Right. I'm sure you heard you'd hear it a lot. I think you even mentioned it, Tibbs, at the Warp Tour. A lot of the guys were like, "That ain't music. It's mm-hmm. scratching records, shit." Yeah, that's not an instrument. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you I can play your fucking guitar better than you can play my turntable. That happened a lot. Nobody ever came close. I can play all that shit, drums and all that shit, way better than they can scratch. Well, since well what that, about Yoko? Yoko, yeah. what, what do I think of Yoko? Is no. that music? No. No, she's just obnoxious for the, <laughs> for the sake of being obnoxious. Have you heard that album that... Uh... She has lots of those. No, the, what was that one album that we? It doesn't. Actually, it doesn't matter. She's, <laughs> she's look. She sucks. <laughs> look, there's a there, there's there's a there's a fine line between experimental and this is just horseshit. <laughs> and that's just. And she's crossed that line. <laughs> she crossed the, the minute she opened her mouth near a microphone. She was over the line. <laughs> I have one of her songs on my playlist. Do you really? Yeah, that's that song where she goes like war, war. <laughs> You ever heard what's uh who's another one from that the Beatle thing? Um I have this record called Celebrities at Their Worst. Oh. It's like, you know, celebrities cussing people out on air, and then there's one, it's Paul McCartney with wings, and Linda McCartney is singing backup in the sound man to be a smart ass. He's got he's recording it all. The ice odor. <laughs> he isolates Linda McCartney, and I swear to God, it sounds like someone is strangling a squirrel. <laughs> she fits right in there with Yoko. So I'm not like singling out Yoko. I'm, they both suck. <laughs> well, so what we've learned from this philosophical is that Dibs decides if it's music. <laughs> I was going to say, look, I'll do the deciding. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we do need somebody. Though. They should start a super group. <laughs> Yoko and then <laughs> you, you know you when you social media and all that made it 100% possible for people that shouldn't even be able to breathe air to make music and they're fucking horrible <laughs> and I'll, I'll I wish the internet would die some days and just so people so these just any of some of these artists that got big off of their internet presence go out and hand out flyers and when yeah when when there was that looming threat a while back that like all that shit was going to, but whatever, like a Y2K. No, but it was like during COVID where stuff mm-hmm. started crashing. I was happy as a pig and shit. I'm like, let's do that. I know exactly how to do it. Hand to hand out to trunk store to store and talk and talk and talk. And none of those kids would know how the first time I was on my homies podcast, like the first one I did. And we talked about, he's like, what'd you do before? Like, uh, the internet. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like to sell records. And I explained how you sell records 
when there's no online shit. He couldn't believe, like, I called your store and said, I'm going to send you a promo. Then I had to follow up with that. Then I had to go mail them out. How'd you get them made? I'm like, you called the plants. We had lists. We traded them. And nobody could believe it. They're like, you sold records out of your trunk? Yeah. Yeah, and all the ones you you were selling had your your fucking phone Old number cell. and <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think his computer. Yeah, let's let's die. check out your painting and then we'll do some. Uh... Oh, look! You get... what'd you do with the whites? How'd you do the whites? Or is mind there white? Laser. Mind laser. <laughs> mind laser. What is he? Let's see. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could see it better. You, I want it. You're gonna have to send it to us. Yeah, I want it. Not a problem at all. <laughs> you got to sign it. Yeah, you got to sign it. I want that. They don't dance no more. I'll put it next to my uh, hair. Sign it on the back or the front? No, on the front. Well, let's do the um, the the promotions. What how what's going to how is this playing out? How is the how are the three albums playing out? How w- what's that look like for people? And how, how, where's that? How's that begin? How am I trying to phrase this question? Tell us about the new release. So, depending on Brett's mood, Friday at some point or Saturday at some point, Friday morning at midnight, right? December 2nd. December 2nd, Friday. And you're going to do, how are you rolling them out? It's going to be a link that goes out. You're going to go to mrdibs.com and it'll be there. Set your alarms. At midnight. midnight at, uh, so does that mean midnight, thir- like Thursday, 1159, and then midnight that Friday or the midnight after that Friday on Friday the 2nd? It doesn't matter because <laughs> just sometime Friday, when you wake up Friday, it'll it'll be there. Maybe. Okay. What if someone unless it's Saturday at midnight? What if it goes like I didn't like get to morning. put it in the last episode, but I because I, I'm I'm happy for him. But like Sage Francis's per, personal journals, they I think they did 200 or 300 and they were gone in like an hour. I doubt they'll be gone in an hour. We don't. rap. You don't rap. No. Well, I wrapped the print. <laughs> <laughs> Military <laughs> tag. So Friday at. Friday at twenty four hundred. Zero zero zero. No, it's z- Friday at oh zero hundred. Oh. Zero 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 zero. Yeah, yeah, zero 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 zero. Okay, and then what? So that so that th- this album's c- coming out. There's three hundred only. There's this is not. A, there's no bullshit on that. It's three hundred, and, it and that's it. A- and it comes with a limited edition print that will, when you release the, the other two albums, yep, they line up. So the print that I did for it. You'll get an, another different print and then another print. If and you buy the, if you buy all three, you have to buy all three albums. So the yep. second album, when's the second album coming out? No, no date yet, but how when, long about when Brett decides to put it out? No, hopefully the next album. I'm hoping that the next album comes out way before this one did because maybe the vinyl plants will be uh the pressing plants will be caught up, but right. So it's possible we could be a few few months, four months, five months, six months. We don't know what the turnaround is. We, we have to investigate. We have to do some investigating. Okay. So T-B-A. But what about the third the third album? Have you guys already started working on that? I know you said it's going to be starring Linda Blair. Yeah, we're working on it. It's in, currently in, in, in. We're working on it. You just have right now, Ty, you're waiting for your next batch of videos to watch. Okay. Yeah, because I need to come up with two new album covers. Yeah, so I got some special. Special oh, things for you for for number two. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> oh boy, I gotta yeah, I have to take a, a volume before I <laughs> go <laughs> into them. <laughs> Give some stuff that will make you have nightmares. <laughs> no, that wasn't all that bad. It was just yeah, it was a lot for me to to digest. <laughs> It's like a good bowl of cereal, Ty. You got to let it sit for five minutes before you eat it. You might <laughs> well, cut your mouth. I look forward to you trying that life cereal diet, by the way. It really works. Don't do I it. I just wonder if I can get away with it, meaning, you know, like I found out that like one time Ray was out of town and I decided I was only going to eat bean burritos. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to perfect the perfect bean burrito. Doesn't seem like there's a lot to it, but I made it into a whole ordeal. And then I perfected the perfect bean burrito 
and I ate them for two weeks while she was out of town, maybe longer. And then I noticed about a week ago, because she caught me somehow. I wasn't doing it on purpose. I was only eating peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> She's like, Are you, you want some? I was like, I had a peanut butter sandwich. She's like, have you been eating peanut butter for a week and just one sandwich? I'm like, well, yeah. And then I'm like full. She's like, yeah, well, you need to eat something else. So I did. I'm just saying, I think I could get away with the life thing for a little bit. Uh, but what? MrDibs.com. Yep. Brett Fullerton.com. On Bandcamp. Band. Brett Fullerton. Bandcamp. Brett Fullerton. Bandcamp. Com. And what else? George Michael or Michael Buble? George Michael all day. <laughs> oh, fuck, you guys. That's fun. I, I did want to get it on record. We were really, Adrian and I were truly, truly planning to come out and help stuff, uh, stuff record, or, uh, yeah, stuff records. I will tell you why that's not a good idea this time. You would have seen the way these prints were ordered, <laughs> you would have been on the phone. <laughs> Somebody on the other end in Utah <laughs> not been having a good time and not looking forward to you and Adrian's return to the homestead. So, in defense, in defense of the children, I think it was better that me and Brett handled it and you two didn't see what we saw. Also, they put drugs in there. Oh, I knew they where I was wondering where they went. <laughs> All right, that's it. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> All right. No, uh, we'll 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 uh, we'll uh, get this out on Wednesday, so everyone will be reminded about how important it on Friday is. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for hanging with us. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Drive safe on your way home, Brett. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Brett. Just take that's- one. Just take the spaceship that says <laughs> parked down there. In the. <laughs> Hope you don't get locked in the garage. Oh, there goes my. Oh, yeah, his Goodbye. battery. Perfect timing. timing. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. We'll talk to you guys soon. All right, cool. Okay. Bye. Peace. Right, later. Peace. <laughs>